This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, the Game Boy Geek here. Hey, today we're gonna be working hard programming. That's right, bunch of ones and zeros going in. But we're not just programming anything today. We're gonna be programming mechs and those things are gonna be going around, running around, turning, attacking, moving, trying to kill some minions. Today, we are talking about mechs and minions. This gigantic box that I can't even fit on the screen. It is for two to four players. This is a cooperative programming game that has some card drafting, uh, also has some sort of comboing going on and it has 10 different scenarios. Each scenario takes anywhere between 60 and 90 minutes to play. Let's take a look. I first want to give you a scale for how big this box really is. It's almost twice as tall as a standard Ticket to Ride box. And it's almost twice as wide as two standard Ticket to Ride boxes. When opening the box, we see this cool little welcome letter, followed by some of the many minions you'll see here, plus some of the custom mechs. I want to show off how cool these mechs look painted. They're unbelievable. Now with the plastic top off, you can see that even though the miniatures have many different poses, they all fit into any of the compartment's beautiful design. Below that first level of minis is another full level of minis. Below that level of the minions is another level that has more minions, and it starts to give you some of the rule books, the Fieldmaster rule book, the tutorial rule book, and then 10 of the different top secret missions that you'll be going on. Underneath that, you'll be getting to the big huge player boards, the cards, the bombs, the timers, the boards, and then of course there is a boss here. And below those player boards you have some main boards you'll be using, and many of the boards that you'll be using to make up the scenarios. Now there are 10 top secret missions you'll be going on in specific orders over the course of the game, and there is a tutorial guide to take you through sort of a mini mission to learn the basic mechanics of the game. Speaking of minions, here's some of the different poses you'll see them in. They don't change depending on their pose, they all work the same, but here's what they look like close up. Now the different scenarios use multiple boards, different sides of boards. I'm going to just give you a very basic idea of how the game works and just setting up a one board tutorial. Now each mech gets their own command line. This is a large board where you'll be placing the cards that you draft in order to run programs to move and activate your mech in different ways. Now there's three different types of cards in the game. There's something that'll allow you to turn, something that'll allow you to move, and something that'll allow you to attack. And within each of those three types, there's also sort of different suits, if you will, of fire, computers, metal, and electricity, but you're still turning, moving, or attacking through all these different types of cards. Now the missions go through up to three different phases. The first phase is the player phase. In this phase, we put out five different cards and the different players get to select which card they wanna draft in turn order, but they only have a minute to do it with an awesome huge timer. Now, depending on the amount of players, you'll either get two or one cards, whether you're playing with two all the way up to four players. And once you've taken that card, you have as much time as you want to decide where to place it. This is going to get programmed in order from one to six. At the beginning, you'll just place them in different places, giving you some space to program before or after it. And then starting with the first player and going clockwise, everyone gets to run their program from left to right. They have to activate each card. At the beginning, everyone just has one card. So in this case, let's say I was the first player, I would just move forward and I could possibly attack people if they were there. You can never attack other uh, mechs, but you can push other mechs to help them move. Uh, and so there's moving and attacking going. Everyone would, would do out their program. And as rounds go on, you'll be getting more and more different things to program on your mech. Also, if you have the same type of card, fire and fire, you can duplicate it. So allowing you to do the top ability, but a level two of it. So each card has a different level. And depending on if it's the first, second or third card of that exact type, you can do it on one of three different possible levels. This one, I have a level two. So I could actually move two spots and then, you know, kill up to two targets that are to the left and right of me. 
So if I was here, I would have moved one from my first card, which is Omni Stomp, and then move forward two. Anytime you run over a minion, you actually stomp them and they get destroyed. And then I could have used my Blaze to also destroy this minion. I would go through my total program like that. Now this main board helps you keep track of the minion kills. Every time you get a fifth minion kill, you can move the team gear up by one and these get wiped, opening it up for new minions to get killed. Once this gets to certain levels, different characters will activate cards that will give them special abilities for their specific mech. Also, there's a doom tracker. It works differently every scenario, but essentially it will be going down as certain things bad happen. It's typically a loss condition if you get to a certain level on the doom tracker. Now after everybody's executed the command lines, you go to the minion stage. All the minions move and they move differently according to the scenario that you're in and what they're trying to do. After they move, uh, they spawn new minions. And again, that will change depending on the scenario, but they'll be spawning new minions in different spots. And then the minions will attack adjacent in every area. So this minion would attack him and this minion would attack him. And you basically get uh, to take a damage. Some damage cards, uh, will make you roll the die and see what slot it goes in. You roll this die, this goes in slot four. So this actually covers up this one right here. And this makes me every time, I would immediately have to rotate left. And then every time I get to the spot in my program, I'd have to rotate left. Some damage actually is one time and then they get discarded. Like reorder your command line, swap sl slots five and six. So in this case, I would have to slot, swap the two things in five and six. And, in, in, and uh, there is ways that they get rid of damage. In the drafting phase, when drafting a metal or a fire card at the bottom, you can scrap that, meaning you draft it and get rid of it to get rid of one damage and I can get rid of this and reactivate that. Also, if you draft a computer card or an electric card, you can get rid of that and scrap that card to swap any two slots in your program. So if you wanna reprogram your mech. There's also a compass up there and certain scenarios will have you roll this rune die. And depending on the color, certain things will happen in that direction. But that's pretty much the basics of how the game works. But every scenario is completely different in setup and how it plays and the outcomes. All right, well, there's mechs and minions. Let me show you the perspective I'm coming from here. Number one, I don't own even one quote unquote miniatures game. And I barely ever play miniatures games. You would have to totally talk me into it, make me lose a bet, or bribe me to play a miniatures game in general. Uh, I don't typically like those types of games. I don't even like dudes on the map style games. I don't even, wouldn't even think about trying to paint miniatures, nothing like that. It's not my style of game. In addition to that, I've never played League of Legends. I played tons of video games growing up all the way through college, but have not played some in recent times. So this is an interesting perspective, different from many of the other viewers that have done this game. Now, with that being said, I love cooperative games and I love programming uh, and I love drafting. And that is why I wanted to give this thing a shot to maybe be the first miniatures game that I end up keeping in my gaming library. So going into this, I had uh, some re reservations, but I was excited at the same time. Obviously, the production of this game is unbelievable. From that standpoint, it is a game changer. It is going to, and it already has, erupted this industry in lots of chatter, lots of, hey, how are they doing this? Granted, they have the resources in both time, money, people, in order to do something like that. They, this is not their business model. They are just essentially offering this to the fans for something cool. And, you know, they're not trying to make a lot of money doing this. And they are in a different perspective, different position than many other board game manufacturers where they're doing this. This is their main, your main business. So in this case, it is a game changer because you go to Essen that was just, that was, you know, just finished. And you're going to go buy a $70 retail game. And it's going to be like a big box game with a lot of wooden bits. It's going to be a Euro game. You spend $5 more and you get this? Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. It's not even the same sport. It shouldn't even be fair to be able to do something like this. Uh, so the other board game manufacturers are never going to be able to do this. Uh, but I think what it might do is it might have other video game companies looking at this and going, huh, okay, we've got a really popular video game too. Maybe we'll do something like this. Now, I gotta say that uh, Riot Games really did their homework here. They consulted with some of the industry's experts, um, and, and it's clear and that it was very well play tested, that, that there was a lot of thought that went into it, and they did it right. If other video game companies do it right, uh, I think this could be an interesting industry where there's maybe one of these that come out of here from different things, and all of us go crazy because it gives us a ridiculous value. This thing, I mean, I listened to Stephen Bonacore, the president of Stronghold Games, say that if he was selling this, he would have to sell it at $200 retail in order to make any money on it. And to get this for $75 is ridiculous. So with all that aside, let's talk about gameplay. I loved it. It was a lot of fun. Programming was awesome. The drafting was fun. Uh, you're, you know, you're making your mech. You're trying to get through the scenarios. 
you're trying to decide, what am I gonna do this turn? Or do I have to reprogram something? Or do I wanna like level up on a certain thing? Do I wanna get the third level of chain, the chain lightning so I can kill five minions in one turn? So it's cool because you can really build up your mech to be something special. Maybe you go run around and do something and, and hold the defense over here. We're going to go out and grab some stuff and use our speed. And you're working together. It's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, the production, obviously, as I mentioned, was amazing. Uh, the different scenarios are awesome. Uh, now, with the different player counts, I, I have a feeling this game was originally designed for four players and then tr tried to figure out a way to make it work with the other player counts. And I'm not saying it doesn't work with the other player counts. What I'm saying is, is that, you know, with two players, you're getting four cards every round each and you're able to build up your mechs faster and, you know, they're, they're more powerful, easier, but there's less places you could possibly be. So some missions might be a lot, or are definitely a lot harder with two players than four players. But some of them on the missions where you're, you can have a lot of power quickly and be in concentrated areas, then maybe they're a little bit easier with two players. But in general, I'd say the game is harder with less players, uh, but it's not undoable. So uh, overall, I absolutely love the game. Uh, just going through the scenarios if you're going to play this game there's some audio files that you can download on the league of legends uh website uh and i highly recommend that i helped with the immersion of the game it helped with the funny stories the voices for me for someone who doesn't know the mechs and stuff uh it was fun to listen to their voices listen to their personalities come through and it felt like a more it, it was a much more immersive experience so i highly recommend doing that uh programming was awesome i love that you could you know take those cards and scrap them that you draft to either get rid of a damage or swap things. I love how you level up on the uh, as you're killing the minions and you get up on the gears, you can activate special abilities. Uh, awesome, really, really well done. So this is the first uh, uh, miniature style game that I am gonna be keeping in my uh, gaming library uh, because it is a very solid game. I highly recommend it. This is, a, this is one of the best games I've played all year. If not the best, uh, go. it's definitely going to be probably my top 10. I couldn't imagine this not being in the top 10 of my games this year. It's that good for someone who typically doesn't like this style of game, but the mechanisms I like. So with that, let's do it justice with a saxophone serenade. <laughs> video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.